Hi, and welcome to the tutorial and video guide for my FUI Toolkit. The Toolkit is a collection of presets that help you build, design and animate futuristic user interfaces inside After Effects. To use the Toolkit, just head over to the Effects and Presets panel and find the Toolkit folder. Inside, you'll find 120 presets in different categories. There's things like easy to use and editable graphs that animate. There's cool looking futuristic circles. We have awesome blocks for data visualization, professional looking UI data text blocks, and animation presets for text layers. Most of these simple to use assets have their own single effects controller, which allows you to customize the look of a UI element to suit the design of your user interface with just a few clicks. And each asset in the toolkit is made from just a single shape or text layer. So let's have a look at the graphs category. Here we've got a collection of graphs. Now each graph is built from a single shape layer. Now you can access the graphs from the effects panel here or the project that comes with the toolkit. But it's a lot easier to access it from the effects panel. So I'm just going to open up a new comp and we'll head over to the grass folder. And I'm going to double click the first preset and load it into the comp. Now we if we head over to the effects control, you'll see that there's a single control uh, which, known, which is known as a pseudo effect. Uh, just a quick note uh, that some of the presets have the letters PE at the end of it which means it's a pseudo effect. Uh, this just means that it's a single effect that you can control. It's nicely housed within one effect and it's not made out of multiple sliders. So let's have a look at the first graph. Animated bars, as you can see, it's a single shape layer and we've got multiple controls here. So I'm just gonna pull these down and have a look through them. You'll notice as we go along that each graph has a similar type of control. I'm just going to pause this and let's have a look what we can do customization wise. Let's start with the color. I'm going to make this a blue and a, the background maybe a darker blue or maybe what, a gray. And we've got this cap on the side. I don't really want that, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I want these to be thinner, maybe. So let's try that. So that will be the line behind it. And then I also want these to be thinner as well. So that will be the bar height as well. And I hit play and they animate. Uh, but I want them to be a bit more spread apart. And then we need to offset this just a little bit. So it's in the middle. So yeah, we've got loads of different customizable options here. Um, let me say if I were to delete that and load it in again, Loads very quickly. Let's say I want to try something a bit different. We're going to go with a more industrial look and then maybe get rid of those caps. So that will be, un which you could be circles if you wanted to, but let's just get rid of it completely. And then I want to make that background bar height a lot bigger. And then maybe a fewer amount of graphs. So let's go with four. That's the wrong one. This is the one. Four. And we've gone outside the rain uh, the graphs, so let's just decrease the spread. Just check they don't go out. Yeah, it's fine, but a little bit too over to the right, so I'm just going to adjust the bar position slightly and increase the distance. So, yeah, you can see how quickly we've just created a new look with just a couple of clicks, and that would have taken you a lot longer to do manually, of course. 
So let's just go through these really quickly now. So the next one I'm going to load in is Animated Bars on Lines, which is basically the same as what we just saw. They just animate on lines. And it's exactly the same preset as the one before. All I've done is just tweaked a few of the options to make it appear it's on the line. And what I've actually done here is made the background height one pixel. So if I were to make it bigger, you'll see now it's on the background. And that's it there. It just gives it a different look. But you can see that there's loads of different options you can do to customize your presets. Flashing grid, quite a simple one. We've got some controls here. Change the number of rows and columns. So let's change the number of rows to five. And then maybe make them circles. And then change the row spacing. You can hit stop for a second. And maybe go with five across and then increase the column spacing so they're a bit wider apart. There you go. What if I want them bigger? No problems. Let's make those bigger. And let's change this back to squares. And we've got some color control here as well. So maybe something like that. So very quick and simple flashing grids. I'm just going to go to the next one, which is clean bar graph. I'll come back to these in a second. So when I'm making UIs, graphs are probably the number one asset I use all the time, and they always take a long time to make. So I'm really happy with this one because it saves me a lot of time. So let's just show you how quick it is to create and customize these to make your look. So let's say this is looking a bit too thin for my liking. So I'm just going to increase the width, which also increases the background at the same time. And then I want the height of the background to be a bit bigger. And then I want this to come out a bit more. So that would be the bar height. And now what if I want it to have some a stroke? No problem. So yeah, we've created a new look. And we can control the animation here. And the colors we can control as well. So really quickly, you create graphs. Um, you reset that, and then I'm gonna go and change the distance to say forty, and then change the width to ten. Actually, let's go with five. And then I'm going to duplicate, put it underneath, and then just change the color. And because there's a, a random seed on the animation, we've got a different look each time. So let's actually push that this one up here and I'll duplicate that one again. So yeah, really quickly you created a dynamic bar graph animation with just a few clicks. So move on to the next one. I'm just going to go to a clean bar graph of padding. And this one, I'm just going to make a bit smaller uh, by going to the main controls and changing the height. So this one has a couple of caps on the side. This is like a divider. You can change the width if you need to. And you can also change the spread. And again, we've got color options. So this says padding. The padding option gives you some space around the actual graph. Let's just make this easier to see. So if I increase the padding, I'm going to get rid of these caps because I don't want them. Gives you this look here. And you can also add a stroke to them as well. So now it gives you a bit of another look. Okay, let's have a look at some spectrum graphs. The reason I call them that because they remind me of audio spectrums. 
And what I'm going to do here is increase this to say 35. I'm going to turn off the stroke. And then I'm also going to make the width for the background, maybe two. And then also change the bar width to two as well. And then change the distance to four. And now we've got, and then I'm going to quickly increase this. See how quick that is. And now I've got some type of audio waveform kind of effect. And I can change the bar height to something like that. Gives me a different look. It's talking about different, talking about different looks. Here's another one called C. Basically, it's the same as the previous one. It just looks like slider controls. So I just save that as a different preset, just to give you a different option. And again, we've got the same number of controls here to create your own different looks. So I'll just quickly make a new one here. Let's make something hideous. And let's go with just five. Change the distance and then change the background. Not the stroke, we want the background here. And then maybe the height here and the width here. Yeah, I don't know what I'm really making here. That looks terrible, but I'm not in charge of your designs. Okay, just a final few more. Horizontal bar animation, similar to the first one we looked at. This is just the older version. And a few more options. And if I change the opacity and increase the number of bars, kind of get this more like a DNA organic look. But really quick to create some fractal like designs. And again, you've got the options to change the um, size and everything else you need to. Okay, the next one I want to show you. Uh, next one I look at is a single bar graph or block bar graph rather. I'm just going to change this to 12, change this to 6 and uh, turn on our guide so to see where my controller is. So this is a single block graph and I'm going to change the color so we can see this better. We want background color, that's the one. So this animates with a wiggle. You can tr control the animation here. We can control the width of the bar block. Uh, we can control the width of the block and the height. So let's just change that to thirty. Change that to twelve, and maybe the spacing tighter together. Spacing. There you go. Actually, maybe I want a stroke width and I want white. And let's change that to a darker blue. So yeah, that animates. And then we could just duplicate this a few times. And preview that. And we've got an animation. Very quick. So again, with this one, loads of different control, uh, customizable options you can have with this. And it's one you'll probably use a lot to create graphs because creating graphs always takes forever. So let's go with this option. Right, the final two graphs I want to show you are quick animated bar graph. Now, these are made from a text layer. Uh, the advantage of using a text layer is they actually render quicker and easier to use. Uh, 
sometimes you just need a quick bar graph and you don't really need that many controls so this one's for you and the way this works is you just have to enter a dot so i'm just pressing the full stop or period button and it creates me graphs and i've got some controls here i control the variation and the width so let's make these really thin and of course the height no backgrounds for these these are just simple graphs that you can just have and if you want one and if you're too lazy to do this and rotate on a different axis well no worries there's one for the y-axis as well same thing but it doesn't have rotation and again you can control the height and the width and to control the color you just change it from the text character field something cool you could do is actually maybe change the height the width a little and swap the strokes and then you've got a different look but you've got these caps because basically what it's doing is stretching or scaling the text box so you get these little caps so maybe not the best look but if you want to go for that look you could so just a bonus tip if you wanted a different look to this maybe if you wanted this, this to be made from dots if you type in cc starburst and then change the scatter to zero change the speed to zero and then change the grid space to two and the size you've now got a different look you just have to tweak the size just to get it perfect there we go that looks much better yeah so really cool just a little tip for you all right okay so now we're going to move on to looking at some of the circle elements in the toolkit and again to access them you just go to circles and you'll see a collection of circles here so let's have a look at some of the circles i'm just going to open up a blank hop again first one is animated four dots element this just gives you a quick little and four dot blinking asset that you can just use for anything you need to and we've got some color controls here and options next one is animated advanced circle widget so this is the only one you have to pre-compose to use because it's using a caller coordinates to create the circle effect if i turn that off it's actually set of uh, shape layers and then if i pre-compose this i can now move it anywhere and it's got animation on it as well So I'm just going to undo that and then you can, you've got some custom options here. So let's go with like a blue and a orange. You can see what I'm doing here. And let's go with another yellow maybe. So if we were to move this around here, get a bit laggy and it also really work that well, but let's make it like this. Pre-compose, now you can move that asset without any problems. Okay, so let's have a look at the next circle preset. We've got animated circle dot graph. I've applied a glow effect to this one for stylistic reasons, but you can turn it off if you don't want it. Uh, this is basically a circle dot graph made of circles. You can control the number of circles through here. Let's make these smaller so we can see those circles and then make those dots smaller. And uh, we can control the background color. So maybe it does look cool with that glow. And then 
like so. And this animates with a wiggle expression on the number of dots. If you don't want it animating, you can turn it off. But there are some animation controls here. You can just say zero and that will get rid of the wiggle. If I put that to one, it moves quite quickly. And 10, sorry, 12. I'll change the amplitude. What if we want a fewer number of dots? Maybe something like a clock on the wall. So let's go with something like this. Change so those dots. And let's change the background dots to red. And then the middle dots to white. And go with six. And change that to three. Glow doesn't look that great here, so let's try a blue with a dark blue. Yeah, so there you go. And uh, this one should come in handy for something, I hope. Let's delete that and move on to animated circle element. Uh, this just gives you a clean looking circle with a rotating widget in the middle. Uh, we've got some control here. So if you wanted the outer circle to be say 200 and maybe the widow width to be bigger and the uh, let's change that here and then we can change the inner dot to be red and that highlight color to be yellow. And this color here decrease the opacity and then make that green. Well, that looks quite hideous, so let's try blue. Yeah, so just a quick element that you can customize to create something new. And the little cool thing with this is if you duplicate it. Duplicate, it's a cool thing this is if you duplicate the shape, okay, it creates a new position for the middle highlight, so it always looks different. So let's just delete these and go into our, so let's go into circles and have a look at the next one. It's animated circle graph. Just a quick graph and we've got some controls here. You have some dashes if you want. Control the size, the background width, the main circle width. So yeah, this one probably use quite a bit. I do all the time. Let's just show you why it's so not easy to use. Let's make that like this. Decrease this. And decrease that and let's just go over my range and I'm going to duplicate the shape layer and then right away we've got they don't always create an exact clone because of the seed from the wiggle it creates a unique look every time and this goes for most of the presets in the toolkit. So animated line widget kind of creates you some type of planet orbiting graph. This one has a couple of different customizable controls, color, widths and heights and things. Um, so if I wanted to change maybe the outer circle, maybe change, get rid of it or make it thicker. And then this circle here, maybe if I want it to be a bit and I want that bit to be bigger and I want the, I want that to be maybe this color. And then this bar itself to be blue. Maybe this inner track to be blue as well. Creates a funky little UI there. That little dots 
getting a bit hidden so let's go with white so yeah it's just playing around and uh, seeing what you can come up with And again, this is a single shirt layer. So I've got more circle elements here. And again, you can customize this one. Just a random circle element, you can use it for whatever you need to. We've got some customizable controls, color as usual. We can control the maybe width of this. I'll get to that yeah so the next one is animated dot graph and uh, this one's quite simple as well it's just uh, kind of like the block graph but it's using circles once again we can control heights and widths and everything you need to from here and um, let's try creating one can add a stroke as well and I'm just going to duplicate this duplicate duplicate preview and we've got some circle graph thing so yeah it's very easy to create your own look let's just create a single one here I'm gonna spread these out I kind of want to go for a modern one with orange and background stroke color. There we go. That's nice. So yeah, really quickly you can create your own dot graph. Okay, we've got an animated half circle. Um, it's basically a graph and you can control the um, colors through here. Okay, another one that I use often is just a random rotating circle that means absolutely nothing. Once again, we've got full control over here. And I'll create one just for very, very quickly. A red circle with a lighter background. And I will make this smaller. I'll have some dashes. And then I will also make it smaller on the inside and duplicate it to give me different looks and if I don't want the dashes I'm going to hit zero copy this preset and paste it to the rest and I've got rid of them very quickly so that's one of the advantages of, of using a single layer preset or a single layer a pseudo effect is you can apply it to any other existing preset. Animated dots and circles, just a quick one here. Not much control on this. Um, it's just a text layer and you can control it by adding dots yourself and it randomly creates field and unfilled circles. So I'm just randomly placing some dots. You can control the size using the text layer. So yeah, really quickly, if you just wanted to create some linking circles and then you control the speed through here. It's just a time animation. All right, next couple is circle animations, uh, A, B, C, D. I'm going to show you B. Um, they all look quite similar. And uh, if you just need some generic old school 
FUI fluff circles, then these are go to's. And, D. and they say the word seeded. Reason being is if I were to So if I just highlight these and duplicate them, you can see that the position of them have all changed. They're the same, but the position is different. So it kind of gives you a slightly different look every time. And we've got a circle bar graph. This one, you can control the number of bars. So if I wanted more, it could happen. Let's just go with 12 and then have just four showing because it looks like a clock. You can control the uh, height, the size, and the thickness. We've also got a couple of circle elements that look really cool. Uh, these you can use in your project. They don't have much customizable options on them, but they just look really cool and you can apply them just by double clicking. So to show you one example, I'm going to go with a circle data unique. And if I were to duplicate it, you'll see that it adds on top because each position of the arc is different every time, which means you've got a unique seed for each circle. So if you were to duplicate it, in your own projects, they'll look different. Different enough to give you a different bit of variation. So let's have a look at the block elements in the toolkit. Now, as you can see in the layers panel, these are all made from single um, solids, text layers, or shape layers. I really had fun creating these because you could really push the power of a text layer in After Effects to create some really cool results. Uh, something I had fun doing. It's something that people don't normally do, but I hope fully uh, it's something you can use your projects because they render really quickly. So I'm going to have a look at a couple. I'm just going to open up a bank comp and let's start with animated block grid. Now you'll see there's a version CC13 and CC16. Uh, the latest versions of After Effects from 2019 upwards use a JavaScript as the engine to run expressions. And by that, I mean, if you go to project settings, expressions, you'll see that the expression engines is JavaScript, uh, which gives us a few different controls that we couldn't do in previous versions. But if you are running a previous version, I've made a pre, uh, an older version option here. But let's just show you the new version. So I pull that in and we get a single text layer. So I'm just going to zoom in and from the effects control, you can control the number of blocks. So let's try loads of blocks here. And we can control the width and height of a block. So let's make this smaller. And I've linked it to the space between, but you can offset it yourself if you want to change the uh, spacing between the blocks. So let's maybe go for some squares. And I want more, maybe I'll change the color actually to an orange. And we'll go for our favorite blue. So by the way, we've created this grid of say scanning blocks. And what's good about this is it renders really fast and I'm going to increase the number of blocks across. And I'm just going to reduce the number of on blocks. This is the percentage just so we get a different effect. And I'm going to go with just say 12 and I'm going to go now with the block width to be wider, reduce the number. And 
and maybe go higher as well. So just bigger blocks. Let's just go with 111. And block height, actually, I kind of want it to be like this. Now they're overlapping a little here, so that creates your own look. But if you don't want it overlapping, you can change the line distance. So yeah, this is really, really cool. So if you don't have the latest version of Arc Effects, the non-JavaScript version, you have to enter the dots yourself. So you'd have to just press dot, 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 dot. And that's how you'll create your own grids. It's exactly the same thing, but you just have to enter the dots yourself. which in itself gives you the customization to create your own looks. Maybe if you have a weird looking, random, glitchy thing. And again, we can change the uh, width. All right, we've got a few more. So let's have a look at these. If I double click that, we'll straight away get a um, set of fractal bars. This is maybe a fractal noise applied to a solid. So you can use that for something. And to change that, you just use the uh, brightness and contrast controls. And if you change the mode to add, you'll get rid of the blacks. And if you change the color, you just change the tritone here. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my blocks and have a look at some other ones we've got. Um, let's have a look at the grid makers. And like the blocks, these are just basically using circles. And again, we've got uh, a JavaScript CC16 version, so I'm just going to run that. Let's play. And because again, it's a text layer, it runs really, really fast. We can control the number of dots here. And let's change our colors to my favorite pale orange. And we want that green, so let's go with this. So yeah, we've created a nice uh, grid here. And you've got loads of options here to customize. Space between the dots as usual. Dot size as well. So this is a random wiggle on the offset. And if you don't like that look, you can try the B option. And this will create random animation every second or every frame. Uh, sometimes when I'm making uh, UIs I need to create DNA so I created a seated block element and it acts looks like a DNA kind of string and we've got some options here let's pull that in so it kind of looks like a, a strand of DNA and you can control the color of the main highlight here and this is control your text color. So if my text wants to be darker, I can make it darker. Let's have it white. And then change that to that color. And if I want a more colored blocks, I can say increase that. And what's cool about this is if I duplicate the layer and move it down, it creates me a unique seed every time. So obviously no DNA strands are the same. So now we've created multiple DNA strands and these don't animate. But if we do want them to animate, we can select animated seeded text block element. And this one does animate. Like so. Kind of looks like it's scanning for data or when I'm analyzing something.
Okay, a few more we've got. It's this massive, uh, I would call it massive data element. And uh, I use this to create some type of visual display of a hard drive being analyzed or defragmented. So I decided to include it. And uh, we've got some options here. You can control the color. And this is created using uh, dots. It's just loads and loads of dots that have been scaled. So when I design UIs for film and TV, one of the most time consuming things that take up my design time is creating text. Um, I use them in a lot of my designs. I'm just going to show you a couple here. And they appear in loads of different forms. This is from uh, Venom, um, analyzing some guy getting, this is symbiote in this guy. And um, using just small bits of text is a great way to just fill up space and make things look technical. And it's just ways of adding a, another layer of depth to your designs. And I always find using small different sizes of text helps, but it's creating that text is always a problem for me. And I always find it difficult to just to think, oh, what do I come up with? Is it numbers? Is it words? Is it actual fluff? Is it actual things that make sense? Um, and I'm just going to show you a couple of my designs and show you how I use them. Uh, here, small text. You can't really read it, but you can tell it's text and it just makes your designs look that more aesthetically pleasing. Got some more here. Loads of text here. But how do you come up with this text? What do you do? Like, where do you get it from? You don't want to be sitting there typing this out. So this is why the next set of tools helped you. So shoot a few more here. This is from Venom again. Text here, just random text here. Even here, just, just random bits. Uh, this is from Mars. It's very text heavy. We've got data dumps here. Data, data, everywhere you see data. One good thing about using data is just it's quick and it helps you create, uh, populate your UIs when you really are a creative block and you don't know what to fill. Just chuck some text in, it never fails. And here's some more, just loads of data tables. Um, but I've included some instant text presets, which you can access through here. I've got a couple running in the background right here. Some of them are animated, some of them aren't. We've got long data sets, we've got text blocks. Uh, these all use a certain typeface called Perista. And I use that on most of my uh, texts in the toolkit. Uh, if you don't want to use that, using Carbon or Blender, these are all uh, Adobe, through Adobe typekit. So Carbon is a very good one. Uh, you can't really see it, but there you go. Let's just go back to full. And I've got a few, few more here as well. And you can apply these very easily. Let's just open a blank comp and you just double click and it pulls in some text straight away. And you can use them to populate your designs. So really quickly, I'm just deleting and I'm just going to pull random blocks in. So they're all preset and all, they're always going to come in with this font type and typeface and size applied to it. But what if you don't want to use these? Well, I've got you covered again. What's included is in the toolkit is a Excel or Google Sheets document that has hundreds and hundreds of lines of code and data that I've been using for years. And this is probably the biggest hack uh, I use when it comes to creating uh, UIs. And now I'm sharing it with you. So you can access this through the document, uh, the Sheets document that's uh, attached uh, uh, with the download, or you can access it through a link. You can save to your own Google Sheets. Uh, this is my own version, but then your own version will be identical and you can make edits yourself. Uh, if you go to the bottom here, you'll see there's loads of different tabs. 
Um, but before we go into them, let me just show you a couple of data sets. We've got hex tables, nine digit codes, random data. It's just loads of uh, random data. We've got a fake hard drive directory. I use this quite often because it looks really uh, realistic. Let's go to random loads of numbers. So these numbers are randomly generated by Google Sheets every time you use them. Meaning if I were to just copy and then paste, all those numbers changed every time. So then creating a unique seed of numbers. So we've got two digits, four digits. So I'm even scripting in Google Sheets for you. This little expression applied here to create a random number. So this is great if you just need some random numbers. And I've got data columns here. Uh, but there's tons and tons of data and I don't think uh, you have any problems now ever creating random fluff. Because not only we've got gibberish, we've also got some real data like uh, GPS data here. So we've got real uh, locations, and longitudes and latitudes of uh, countries and cities. Uh, if you want to come up with some fake company names, we've got them here. Fake credit card numbers, fake book numbers, fake IP addresses, fake Mac addresses. We've got a couple of uh, fake names here, some social security numbers. Uh, more fake names. Uh, my name and a few of my family's names are hidden in there. There you go. Uh, we've got some more data here. These are, I've actually used these for real projects plenty of time. More data sets there. Uh, so this is some DNA. This is actually based on my uh, DNA, real DNA that I've got uh, sequenced. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what half of this stuff is, but it just looks cool when you import it into after effects and make your text really small. So let me just give you an example of how you can use them. We've got some star tables here. These are some real satellites that are orbiting the Earth. Names of stars, some science stuff like the periodic table of elements. But let's try random data columns. And I'm just going to copy this chunk and go into After Effects and select my text layer and paste. And this was my UI. There you go. And you can just use that whatever you want. Now, if you want to apply some animation to this, it leads me on to our text animation presets. So let's have a look at that into more detail. So let's see how we can bring your text to life by giving it some animation. First of all, I'm going to load in a number block. And we've got text animations here. We've got three different categories, animating, characters, and visual chains. Animating are for effects that add animation to your text field. Characters affect the characters and visual change changes the color or opacity. So let's change, start with a visual change and go through a couple of these. We've got syntax word highlight. Uh, the purpose of this one is to, to try and create some type of code highlighting effect. So if we double click there, if your word is, if the character, if the length of your word and a word is a, in After Effects, a word is a set of characters with a space between them will be considered a word. Um, if it's equal to eight, it will be highlighted in blue, in blue. So let's see three. If I enter the three here, all the words that have three characters are highlighted in blue. So that's cool. So I'm just going to undo that. And uh, syntax X or more means if it's more than uh, the number input here, it will be highlighted. So if F A Word is has four more or more characters highlighted blue. Okay, let's have a look at some other ones. We've got animated color text scanning. Double click that, hit play, and we've got some type of scanning effect. Random color words, 
double click that and straight away we the color of the word change we can change the color of all the words that aren't that we don't want selected we can change the percentage amount of words so let's go with all blue and then we want 25 percent to be say red and then 25% of the anything else that's not colored to be green and this also animates and we can control the speed from there the next one is the animated random colored line seeded apply that and it randomly colors different lines and we've got controls here the next one colors each character randomly and slowly animates them off and off so a nice different look there Just Add some blue here. You go on to the next one, random line opacity. And just make sure you've got your text box selected. Double click, and instantly we've got some random lines. Now, if it says the word animated ahead of it, it means there is some animation. Can't do that. Do play head back. Random word opacity. This is the one I probably use the most because. I don't like too much color in my text. I just like changing the opacity of the words. Let me show you why. Another example. If I just uh, go to my Excel sheet and select maybe this hex table and bring that in. Bring that in by hitting paste. And just move that here. If I had a block like that, it looks too rigid but if I supply random word opacity just straight away it gives you a more organic feel and it's animated as well so it just brings it to life with just one click delete that uh, animated text data block again make sure your layer is selected and straight away we've got some animation here couple of controllers here uh, sliding text analysis probably my favorite one really gives you a nice organic look because it not, not only does it affect the opacity and color it affects the position as well just make it look like it's analyzing some text We've got change every other line. I double click that. Okay, we've got change every other line. If I double click that, every other line is a different color. So that's good for creating just some variation in your text if you're making columns. So let's actually try one maybe a long text pull that in might be a bit too long so change every other line yeah that yeah, looks good to me maybe not black yeah. quick look fix random word seed um, I use this one a lot. This is one I don't want any animation, I just want some variation. And the reason why it's called seed is if I were to duplicate the uh, layer, um, it doesn't always change the opacity of the same piece of words, it's always different. So, why is that useful? Um, well, let's say we've got some text here. And just gonna duplicate it over, duplicate it over, and if I apply fixed word opacity to it, you'll see it's changed the opacity of each word. Okay, almost a few left. Uh, we've got hidden lines, so just select that. This just randomly deletes a few lines just to break up a big block of text. Instant color words, just apply that and we instantly just get some random color to add it to words. Random blinker line, 
guess what happens when you hit this? We randomly get aligned linking. And random delete quarter of the words. Just delete quarter of the words. Just to, again, break up the big text block. Okay, so let's move to characters. So if I apply the first one, animate 50% of numbers every second. We have our numbers animating up. This will work for characters as well, but numbers work best. Animate character with speed control. Let's apply that. And we've got some very quick movement of numbers. And if you wanted to slow it down or speed it up, you can control it through here. So let's go crazy fast now. When you go really fast, it looks it really looks like each number is different, but it's only cycling through the same number again and again. And this looks especially good for like a long uh, table of numbers. So let's go to say 300. Let's see how good this looks now. Yeah, it really looks like it's uh, doing a lot of work there. Animate random characters. Apply that and we've just got some animation to our numbers. Animate number seed one. Again, just a different style. And again here, we've got some more animated numbers. So these are all a little bit different. Uh, apologies for the naming conventions, they don't really make sense. Uh, make numbers fast. Similar to the one with the slider, but just really fast. So yeah, you'll find, hopefully you'll find these presets useful for animating numbers and text. So random numbers, if you apply that, just randomizes the numbers straight away. So what's that good for? Well, and then when we pulled in this text, we can apply random numbers and then duplicate. And you'll see that every time we duplicate, the numbers are never the same. And the last one is random simple digits on the 20 second loop. Um, if you're making looping animations, which I do quite a lot, this is useful. Okay, let's have a look at animate in. So let's have a look at some animate in text presets. I've just loaded in some text that I pasted in from the Google Sheets document. So we've got animate in. I'm going to look at blinking typing cursor. Probably my favorite one. So this one starts at one second, has a cursor that blinks, and then brings on all your text. And you can control the speed and the blink speed as well. So really nice. You see there's a little cursor that's blinking. Maybe let's hold that for longer. So you can see it's blinking and at two seconds it loads in the text and you can control the speed of that text load so let's have it slower so it feels like we're reading now okay so we've got decode fade on rerun that so it's that simple i'll undo that again we select our text layer double click the preset Press play and it decodes the text and then brings it on again. So you can see jumbled up and it reads it and it swipes down like a pulse. Uh, let's just show that by using some real words. So let's type in presets and then maybe design and after effects. Well down the beginning. And you can see it's decoded and it re-encodes it there. 
So decoding. Just fade it decodes your text without the fade on. I think that's better in my opinion. Let's try decode text word. This one decodes word at a time rather than character at a time. We've got fade up lines. So it gives the lines in one by one. Or you can have line by line. Or you can have line by line and some of the um, words have changed opacity. So some presets uh, work better for headers. So this applies to the next view. So we've got move on, decode and sweep. Apply that. And you can see the text moves on, decodes and sweeps. Now you can see I've got four caps on. So it's in lowercase. So I'm just going to retype this out. The word uh, header and caps. Put the space there and change data. Read. So now that looks better. You can see it. It moves the text from left to right, decodes it, and adds a sweep. So it's a really nice effect that you can use. And I use this a lot. So let's try the next one. On, decode, move, sweep. Similar to the one above, but it has less of a move. It kind of like cuts in. These presets all start from the moment of where your playhead is. So if I start it from a second, decode, sweep, and ease. After a second, it starts. So this just decodes in with an ease. A nice little ease there. And we've got move, sweep, on move, sweep. There we go. And do that. We got on sweep fast, just very quickly. All right, and let's go back to our normal data and try quick code reveal. Double click that. Just brings in your code like a typewriter. We have random line fade on. Apply this, and it randomly brings on lines. We have type cursor. This one is keyframeable. So you have to edit the keyframes yourself. This one only goes up to 20. And the advantage of this is you can create some organic typewriting effect. Or you can have it really quick or fast. So let's just try something here. Uh, we want it to finish all the way. So we scroll around to here. And then I can apply uh, easy ease by pressing F9. And go into the graph editor and just change the graphs. So now it goes really fast and then slows down at the end. And the last one we've got is word decode move sweep, and this is a header one. It works best for headers. You can use them for non-headers, but let's just try it here. There we go. So yeah, quick ways to bring in text animations. When I start a new UI design from scratch, one of the more non-exciting aspects of the design is creating the boxes, windows, or panels that the design elements are housed in. Uh, the design of such assets always has a strong influence on the overall look and feel of your entire user interface. Uh, that's where the Window Maker preset comes in. The Window Maker preset is a tool that will help you create layouts for your UIs inside After Effects quickly and efficiently. It also shows the power that a single shape layer has inside After Effects. Uh, first of all, let's have a look at some real UIs from real world films. 
and just have a look at where these panels or windows appear. Uh, this is from Territory Studio, Studios for the film Mile 22. Uh, you can see here we've got these window panels here and inside those windows we've got boxes and text. But mainly for this uh, demonstration, looking at everything that the UI is housed in. So we've got windows here. And I've seen in a trend now that a lot of UIs are looking less futuristic and more kind of like future UIs, how UIs will look like maybe in five years time, very clean and crisp UIs. And a lot of them have windows. So let's have a look at a few more. This is from uh, Spog from the movie Life. And I'm looking at very brightly colored windows here. And uh, we've got an error message box here. Uh, this is a UI that I designed for Mars. Loads of windows here. Uh, again, from Mars, this is from Mars 2. Loads of uh, windows and panels here, boxes. And it just helped me create um, balanced designs because each of these boxes are there, have equal weights. Or if they didn't, I could space them out. So, for example, this one is HD, and I could just add another box here to make it a widescreen. Uh, this is from Ant-Man from Becca Digital. Uh, loads of uh, boxes and panels here. We've got a panel here. Inside that panel we've got boxes. Inside those boxes we've got little other boxes next to them. Uh, this is another one from Mars I designed. Again, loads of boxes and panels. I think this is from Decca Digital. Uh, again, we've got these windows here. Another one here and a big one behind here and here. And next one's from uh, Fast and Furious 7 or 8 uh, from Cantina. Um, again, we've got this modern black UI look that I think is the new trend now. Uh, Mile 22 again. This is from Territory again for Mile 22. I really like this clean aesthetic. Um, it just feels organized and uh, visually appealing and I recently watched Bloodshot and it had these windows in it uh, this design is from Cantina again so again it's leaning towards that clean minimal UI so I thought uh, let's create a preset where we can create these boxes really easily uh, so let's go to UI windows and have a look at some of the windows that you can create these are all single shape layers and each uh, shape layer or preset has its own controller with loads of different options for customizing and every single uh, element here has just been created by adjusting um, parameters and effects from here and let's get some more So you can see here with just one shape layer, and again, this is just a single shape layer. If I just solo it, you can see. You can create um, uh, so with a single layer, you can create a window look. Now it does sound boring, and believe me, I'm getting bored just talking about it. This is the probably the one of the most uh, first thing I use when I create my UIs is I should go straight for the window and design my panels. The other thing with this is you can actually, let's say I like this one, and I can copy that and paste it to another and it changes it. So uh, let's start one from scratch and see um, how easy it is to make. So I'm gonna, I've just got a new comp. And I've made the background a little bit darker than what we've been usually seen. Uh, and I'm going to go to Toolkit, go to Core UI and apply Window Maker. This gives me a window. And I'm going to first of all position it on the left side and just hide the guides. First thing I'm going to do is just make that a bit longer and make it a bit wider. I'm going to change the colors 
I want it a bit darker and I want the outer line to be two pixels and I don't want a bottom line this header here I want that to be a bit a uh, bit taller so let's make the header height taller and then there's a line here and I want that line to be red so we call that the baseline header baseline and then the header color itself I probably want to be a bit darker as well cool so what if I want more, more panels so I can use the rows and columns and go to three columns and change the distance of the columns here and what's cool is I can now go okay right I've got more space so I can go a bit wider and that'll be enough and then bring that back here so now I've got nice evenly spaced columns so is that easier to create a window? Let's have a look at the other options we can do. So I'm just going to go back to the examples I had. Just have a look at a few more. So there's loads of different designs you can come up with and each one has a different look. So how do we go about recreating something like this one? Well, we'll put in the window maker. and make this a bit wider so that one didn't really have a base line so we'll get rid of that but it did have a big header and it did have some padding so I'm going to increase that and then and I've just got it here I put it on the screen on to my left, which is out of which you can't see. So I'm just looking referencing that. First of all, I'm going to change the colors. And the header color is this. Now the line color is where the magic's happening, I think. So let's change the line color. And adjust the padding. And then the line color should be. Where's the line color? Outer line color. We match this. So as you can see, it's quite similar. And you know, we've created that with just a few clicks. And then, you know, we can go on from there and adjust it ourselves. Maybe from the bottom line, we could. The bottom line color, put that as a yellow. So yeah, it's really easy to create windows. And uh, so once again, the priest, uh, the window maker is really um, a powerful tool to use at your disposal. Uh, I'm gonna just to make a few more while I'm here. Let's try something a bit different, maybe see-through. And then I want um, buy some thin lines. And then I want some squares on each corner so I'm going to go to add some corner squares make those squares and I want the, the line to be blue so let's change the outer line to a blue and I don't want the header so I can remove that I think there's something showing Let's just zero that out. Yeah, and now I've got a nice box, which I can use as a panel or a window. And again, I've got loads of options here. If I want to increase the columns, let's make this really thin. So yeah, this is something I use all the time. And you can spend ages just playing around, coming up with your own looks. So yeah, uh, Window Maker, boring, but very powerful tool. Just like with 
windows and panels. Boxes feature heavily in loads of UIs and it's something that I use in mine. And that's where the box maker preset comes in, which you can access from here. Uh, before we go into, into it, let's have a, a look at some of the different uh, designs you can make. And I've got some here, and again, it's made for a single shape layer. Uh, so let's just say, look at this one, and I'm just going to solo this layer. And we've got controls to add loads of columns. So really quickly, you can create grids that aren't just boxes. So and it's really fast and responsive. Let's just undo that. Uh, so we've got different looks here. We've got another page here of several looks. You can use this um, project as a reference guide for styling. The best thing I can say is just experiment and try some, some out on your own. So why don't I just uh, load one in. So this is the default version. I'm going to boost the opacity and change the padding. I'm just going to go through each option one by one so we know what each controller does. Some are quite clear and some might not be that obvious. Um, so we've got width and height, which is quite obvious. And they're linked to the distance of rows. So if we wanted, let's say, uh, let's say we want more rows, we're going to get rid of the columns and then we're going to change the height. So now, now because the height is 35, the distance between each one will be 35 as well. And that will give you distance of rows rather. And that will give you perfectly linking rows. Let's add some more. Let's go with 12. And then we could also space them out a little. Make sure I select the right one. There we go. And because we've got these corner squares, they act as a nice um, connecting device. So why don't we play around with that? There's actually circles, but we can make them squares. And we can resize them from either the corner or the inside. And they're independently um, controllable. So then they won't make you squares really. So I decided to make it like that. Uh, okay, we've got an option called bottom line thickness. This adds a line to the bottom of the box. Uh, everything here is exactly the same as the window maker preset. I've just renamed it. It's not, no different. And I'm just going to add a bit more spacing. And reduce the number to 5. Increase the spacing again, and then increase the height. You'll notice it. Um, the anchor point is from the top rather than the middle. Makes it a lot easier. So we've got outer line control. That's the width and stroke of the actual box itself. You can turn that off. We've got a bottom line, and we've also got a top line as well, which is. Uh, that will be the header height, but we can't see it right now because of the color. So let's make it the color we can see. And we want the header height. Ah, the header bar opacity needs to be 100. There you go. And let's move those. Corner squares. Yeah, 
in the columns and because there are widths of 183 let's set to 183 and in next door so yeah uh, color change very easy you could make it whatever color you want let's go with our classic dark blue change the bottom line to like a highlighted blue and the top line to say blue as well maybe so the header color let's keep those the same so the header height should be four and the bottom line should be four as well so yeah it's that easy to create your own box um, you can change the padding as well and then you want to add an outer line there and we can remove these so I'm literally just playing around and seeing if I can come up with a look that I like that's interesting there maybe red is it like a military kind of look uh, okay let's maybe go for a darker color change the outer line to like 0.2 so the thin line change the cell padding i'm going to pull down the header height and now i'm going to change the header color to a gray And then I want to add something called top little bar width, increase that. And we can see we've got this little thing on the top left. And I'm going to make that orange. And that gives us a nice unique look as well. Uh, but let's say if I wanted the bar to go down the side, I can by hacking it and just changing the header height to match the height of the box, which is 62. And now I've got a little side thing on the left and I can change the uh, height of that. Uh, okay. So there's loads of different ways you can customize this. And I think now I'm just going to sit here for five minutes and just play around with a couple and just speed this section up. Okay, I'm going to slow that down again and uh, yeah, as you can see, um, it's quite easy to create a couple of um, boxes. So yeah, um, you just have to play around with these controls and you can come up with loads of different looks uh, for your interfaces. Um, you know, these are just, just a few that you can make. It's really easy. Um, and it just saves a lot of time, especially with the um, columns and rows you can just add in remove as many as you want. You can also animate them on as well using keyframes. Um, might as well just show you that now. You know, if you just wanted some boxes coming on, you can say the uh, four, you know, and then they'll animate on. So we finally reached the end of this video. Um, there was a lot to cover and that's why it went on for so long. But I really wanted to go in depth and have a deep dive into every single preset. Um, and I wanted to make sure that if you've purchased this pack that you know what each option does and what you can actually do with the preset pack because it really does help me when I create my UIs. Uh, whether you're new to After Effects or an advanced user, I think um, you may have learned something or pick something up that will help you in your UIs. 
Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to comment below or get in touch with me. Uh, once again, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for the next video.